are behaviors described as examples of intrinsic motivation, because they are emitted without apparent external reinforcement, really intrinsically motivated? Before invoking a construct such as intrinsic motivation, theoreticians should first exhaust more parsimonious explanations of the phenomenon. There are several less complex explanations that are, individually or in combination, available. First, the external consequences of the behavior are occurring but they are not recognized by observers because externally reinforcing stimuli can be subtle. As Fuku has observed, in many applied setting it may be difficult to identify the reinforcers maintaining a given behavior because a seemingly small proportion of human behavior comes into direct contact with easily identified, primary reinforces. Second, the external consequences may be occurring on a lean intermittent schedule and the observer may not observe the occurrences over a long enough a period or settings and misses observing that some occurrences of the response do lead to contingent external consequences. Compounding this possibility is the concern that, the more complex the behavior, the more difficult it becomes to determine the source of control and to completely eliminate the possibility of external control. Last, it is possible that the response itself has become a reinforcing activity to the person who is emitting it because the response, and skill at it, has been learned and refined as a result of external reinforcement processes, for example, shaping and differential reinforcement. In this circumstance, the intrinsically motivated response, so characterized because it no longer requires external contingencies for maintenance, is a product of extrinsic motivation. From a theoretical perspective the controversy over which is better, intrinsic or extrinsic reinforcement is important and interesting. However, from an applied and pragmatic point the issue is moot because most behaviors will extinguish if they do not produce an external reinforcing outcome at least every now and again, and I suspect one, among the many, reason that so many students, and workers, today do not work to their potential is a result of not being reinforced for improvement and or satisfactory completion of assigned tasks. Unfortunately, the results of group experimental studies conducted in laboratory-like settings for example, have been used, incorrectly according to Lepper, as the basis for repudiating the use of reinforcement in applied setting including classrooms.